Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast. We are coming at you on February 2nd, 2021. We're about uh, roughly two weeks into the Biden administration, and that's what we're going to be talking about this episode. But before we get into it, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. <clears throat> My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host. So... Another, I think we're going to have a lot of episodes like this, but we're dealing with babbling Biden. So who knows how long he'll be able to sort of keep up, you know? I mean, we, we may not have him as long as we think we will, you know? He may yeah, really, make really, a year really. they'll be sure they figure out a way to get rid of him. <laughs> I think it's we get rid of him. <laughs> we, Most of us don't think he's going to last a year, so. Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. Well, I, I gave him. I gave him until my birthday next year, so that I'm a little more than a year. So, um, but um, I have a, I have a bet with my brother-in-law on that. Well, at this point, I think the left is just sort of using him like a sock puppet, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's some coming from you know the uh, the left coast, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but anyways, uh, yeah, the first the first topic I wanted to jump into was right out of the gate. Uh, one of the first things he does is to. Uh, kill the uh, the kill the Keystone Pipeline, and that's something that uh, I guess had struggled under the Obama administration with getting approval um, because yes. it's sort of a, a symbol of you know for those people who want to address climate change in government, they see that as a symbol uh, that uh, needs to be put down. And so, <clears throat> under Trump, that was something then that got reapproved. They hadn't made a lot of progress on it, but they were starting to build on it. And then right away, as Biden's gotten in, they have they have come back and killed it. And with that, they've taken about 11,000 jobs, approximately, is what's being reported. Um, but, you know, right in the heart of a pandemic, you know, uh, the, when they've shut down lots of businesses, uh, killed lots of jobs. And the first one of the first acts is to kill some more jobs. <laughs> really? <laughs> what yeah. what uh, government yeah. is good at just nowadays. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on that? Well, if I well was, you know, oh, oh. go ahead, Tim. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to give you the last word in liberty, Leon. Uh, if uh, and I'm, I'm plugging in my iPad because it's the end of the day, and I've been abusing it with lots of uh, video and podcasting here, and uh, so it's starting to run low on fuel. Uh, speaking of fuel, if I wanted to make. Um, uh, st normal fuel, uh, like for gasoline and, and uh, to power uh, airplanes and cars and boats and everything. If I wanted to make it more expensive so that uh, it would make more uh, palatable my um, endeavors in alternative energy, I'd want to make the fuel as expensive as possible. So therefore, I wouldn't want any efficient, clean um less expensive, uh, better for the environment um, pipelines installed underground to move the fuel and oil or the oil, which is basically the fuel. Um, oh, and by, by uh, the way, Tim, before you go on, let me just yeah. for the for the audience, I didn't give enough of a background on this. Uh, the yeah. Keystone Pipeline goes from Canada down to Texas, and essentially it is carrying oil from the tar sands of Canada which is a huge resource of oil, um, but it is also a little bit more, um, you know, energy intensive oil because it's not really in that sweet crude form to start with. But uh, regardless, uh, it is a huge supply of oil and pipeline would be a way to make that more efficient in bringing it down to Texas. So sorry about that. I just wanted to. Get yeah. There. Yeah. So <clears throat> if, um, if I wanted to, um, to make a so-called green energy, um, more uh, uh, easily affordable, I would want to first make the other, the old fashioned stuff more expensive. And so that's that's one good way to do it. And uh, so there you go. And of course, there's all the other angles. Is China going to get the Canadian oil now? And is that, is, uh, is uh, Biden in, in China's back pocket like Trump was in Putin's back pocket? So on and so <laughs> forth. You know, I mean, 
the, the plot thickens. And so maybe Leon will talk about that aspect. You know, the, 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 the hypocrisy in all of this is, is just overwhelming, okay? We have John Kerry telling us that, oh, these people who are going to lose their jobs, they could just um, get new jobs um, building solar panels. Listen oh, to the sure. madness of these people. Yeah. Listen to the madness of these people. The hypocrisy is unbelievable. John Kerry, Mr. Wealthy, runs around with a private jet, leaving a carbon footprint that you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe. He, he runs around in a nice limousine, door-to-door -door chauffeur, leaving a carbon footprint. But you know what? He's telling other people they can't do the same thing. He's telling the rest of us, we are not good enough to do the same thing. Biden does the same thing. Private jets, all these sort of things all powered by fuel, oil, natural gas, but yet they're trying to kill this industry. And well, I have an bias here because the oil and what? gas industry is near and dear to my heart. I spent a chunk of my life working in that industry, even when I was even when I was one of those dreaded bureaucrats. I was still working in natural gas. Yeah, and but, so uh, uh, just, uh, just real quick, when Biden jumps in his jet and fires it up who's paying for the fuel that that goes into that jet we we think oh we oh. the taxpayers oh so yes. so if the cost goes up biden won't even notice it correct exactly exactly okay. i just want to make sure that was understood yes. Yeah, more, exactly. more than likely, Hunter is somehow tied into this with the business arrangement. Oh, so oh I'm sure. Deal. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but but when when but but even so, because they're now they're going to shut down the pipeline. They're going to be, be trucking the oil. They'll have to truck the oil even yeah. even to the, into the United States. They're going to truck it into in, 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 into Texas. What do you think is going to happen? We're going to have more emissions. It's worse for the yeah. environment if this is what their goal. Oh, we're going to protect the environment. It's going to be worse for the environment because the oil is going to be trucked. And yeah. then on top of that now, on top of that, what do you think Canada is going to do? They're going to look for other markets. They're, going to, they're going to just going to say, oh, God, we're going to shut down our production. <laughs> they're going to look for other markets. And there we go, the China connection. They're probably going to be shipping that oil all over the world. Again, worse for the environment. And yeah. these people cannot see that for one second. These are the people who want to lecture us about science. They always want to lecture us. Oh, we got to follow science. But every move they make is anti-science. Every move they make. And there the hypocrisy is unbelievable. Well, there, there also is a safety risk as well that, that goes up when you start putting things on, uh, you know, oil onto uh, the railroads and, you know, trucking as well. Uh, trucking, you know, yes, exactly. Uh, the yes. pipeline is much safer. It's not going through cities and other things like that that a, mm. a rail line is going to be doing so. mm. yeah well even on this pipeline on the, on the pipeline they had a well worked out i mean it was many years in the making they had worked out the route very well they had a very good route and like you said minimal risk in terms of you know if something should go wrong in terms of life loss or that kind of stuff but you can't even talk you can't even be rational with these people the, the, the environment, saving the environment is now their new religion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, the Bidens know very well, even, well, maybe not Joe himself, but I mean, the people in the positions of power that, you know, the one you know, who's got his hand working up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that guy, that guy knows th there's something going on. I don't know what it is. I don't pretend to know, but I do know that it's just a, a bad idea for the rest of us little people and yes. for out of our pocketbooks uh, fuel is going to be a lot more expensive gasoline everything is going to be more expensive and so um i uh i think that uh it's mainly the the democrat voters that are dumb enough to follow fall for this so hey you democrats anybody listening are you that stupid really you you <laughs> You uh, believe that this is all about the environment and Joe Biden is a knight in shining armor that is here to save you from all those terrible oil companies who, of course, like, you know, oh, 
Oh, Leon, Leon said that they were going to continue to to mine the oil and drill for the oil and bring it up and bring it to market, maybe a different sure. market, other markets. You mean they're not just going to throw their hands up and go, oh, let's start building solar cells, you know, and, <laughs> yes. you know for, for all our all our electric cars or what's the deal? Anyway, <laughs> come on, Democrats. Isn't there any Democrats watching this now that is that is going to come to your defense and explain this to us? Why? Yeah, cause, really, really. Because yes. there's there's one of at least two, myself and you, you Democrats, who are really stupid. And so if I'm the stupid one, please uh, educate me. And I'm here to be educated by you. And if you're the stupid one, well, just shut up. <laughs> Sounds like a call for comments, Tim. Yes. <laughs> and you can send those comments into uh, yeah. I guess Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, That's right. Uh, uh, yeah, or knuckleheads at libertariancounterpoint.com. So, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we certainly uh, we, we certainly love to have more comments and uh, maybe a bonus section or something. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> regardless of that, that's just that's just one issue. So I mean, if 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 only Biden just had like one thing a week, you know, <laughs> we have a lot. Of <laughs> He's a, oh really? Uh, he's, he's an endless well. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and as, as far as that goes, so the uh, one of the very first executive orders he signed was also a mask mandate, and so uh, he said that uh, he wanted everybody on federal property to be required to wear a mask. And promptly, the very first thing he did after signing that order was to go over with his family to the, uh, I guess it was the Lincoln Memorial, and not wear masks. Which <laughs> 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 was in violation of the executive order he just signed. And it yeah. was funny because he was questioned about this, uh, or at least the uh, press secretary, Jen Psaki, was questioned about this um, the next day at the uh, White House press briefing. And, um, you know, because there's all these pictures of him and his family not wearing masks over there. And and it was funny because she also was not wearing a mask. <laughs> and, and according to the executive order, she's supposed to be wearing a mask, too. So, I, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, in the White House briefing room. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, yeah, I, don't really. Holly, I don't think a Hollywood script writer would be would take that kind of a chance, you know, because he, he, if he wrote that into the movie. People would be going, are you crazy? I mean, how could how could they do that? I mean, nobody would do that. Make a law and then go turn around in a couple of hours and break it yourself? No way. <laughs> you know, you know, but these but these people, you know, in, in bureaucrats, government bureaucrats, they always think laws is for thee, but not for me. Okay. They're always better than everybody else. They don't have to live by the rules that they're trying to impose upon the rest of us. And Biden's Even not before, afraid to show with that either. <laughs> yes, well, exactly. Right yes. Out after he signs. <laughs> yes. Even before this um this incident with Joe Biden, Joe Biden was on CNN. I think I spoke about this before. He was on CNN. He had already talked about one of his policies was that he was going to mandate um, do the mass mandate for 100 days, uh, as soon as he became president, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff and things like that. And on national TV, this man, without a mask, walked across when the camera was still on and whispered in Anderson Cooper's ear. I don't know what the hell he was whispering, but it didn't look good, okay? But he whispered in Anderson Cooper's ear. This big hypocrisy standing there for us to see. Now we come, he became president. I don't know how, I don't know how a half senile racist becomes defeats an incumbent but that's a different discussion for a different day now he become president he signs the mass mandate and promptly turns around and break and violates it i think i think we should put this man in prison for this crap <laughs> Shit. Oh. <laughs> Well, speaking of putting presidents <laughs> into prison, uh, that takes us to our, <laughs> our very yeah, next thing. In an effort of unity by the Democrats, uh, you know, uh, they, they, the very oh, first yeah. thing they wanted to do, uh, you know, as, you know, a show of unity is to try to uh, impeach Trump for the second time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> even though he's not in office, they're bound and determined to impeach him as a uh, show of unity. Uh, apparently, um, you know, it's it's funny because we're not sure if this is actually uh, 
something that is constitutional since it says it has to be the president that gets impeached. And technically, as this uh, charge comes down, he's not the president anymore. Right. But um, anyways, you guys have any thoughts on um, kind of this whole show of impeachment that's going on? <laughs> well, no, I'll, mm. you want me to go? Well, yeah, go ahead. I, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Let's okay. see what you have to say. I don't want to color your thoughts. <laughs> It's, it's, it's okay. You're already you colored enough. You, you could color you're my colored thoughts. enough. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that, there's the signal board. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the the process of this this impeachment, um, it stinks. Okay, it really does. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean it was a snap impeachment. You know there was no witnesses. Trump didn't get an opportunity to defend himself. Nothing like that happened, and he was impeached by the House. Now it is true, constitutionally, the House has the sole power of impeachment and how they manage the impeachment process is totally up to them, okay, truthfully, okay? <laughs> so I don't like the process by which he was impeached to start with, but I cannot say how they, how they could have not have impeached Trump. No American president, I'm speaking figuratively here now, no American president should be a hundred miles within be, be within a hundred miles of this of this thing that happened on on um on Capitol Hill on on June sixth on, on January sixth. Donald Trump was at that rally. The people that end up in that thing came out of his rally. Now some of it looked like it was pre-planned and all that and that kind of stuff. There were some very loose statements said said there. So he had to be impeached. Now the question is though. When he was impeached, he was still president. The constitutional question then becomes, should the Senate now try him? But the constitutional clearly said it's for removal and disqualification, not removal or disqualification. It says removal and disqualification. How could they remove a man that's already removed? It's still ended. He's out of office. So I don't think I don't think this is constitutional. I don't think this is constitutional at all. So getting back to the issue of here of unity that Joe Biden been preaching. If Joe Biden and the Democrats really wanted to demonstrate some unity here, they should shut this thing down. Fine, they, they were successful in impeaching him. Now he's the only president that have been, that have been impeached twice. Fine, okay, you have put a stain on him. But where is the constitutional authority? For them to continue with this process when the man is already out of office i contend there's none uh that was what uh Rand paul contended and, and had a vote in the senate and this majority agreed that it was yes. unconstitutional uh yes. it, so where does that leave the impeachment process at this point <clears throat> well it's gonna go it's still gonna go forward the, the majority of, of, of Republicans, I think all the Democrats vote, still voted for the um, for the resolution to continue. So, um, uh, so they, they're going to start. I'm sorry. So it's continuing then? Yes, the they're going to start. They're going to start next Tuesday. Okay. But I would hope I would hope once the uh, the proceedings start, I would hope Trump lawyers will ask for it to be to be. Um, to be um, suspended for a little while, while they challenge the constitutional the constitutionality of the entire process. I think they should go to the Supreme Court, and I think it will go to the Supreme Court immediately. We won't have to go through all all, all the um all the um the appeal process. I think it could go to the Supreme Court immediately, and let the Supreme Court rule on whether this thing is constitutional or not, because I think it's it's highly unconstitutional because it says removal and disqualification. It does not say removal or disqualification. It says both. And it cannot remove a man who was already removed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know that the Supreme Court is going to want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. They've been reticent uh, already about anything related to, you know, the, the election process. And, and they've demonstrated reluctance to get involved. So I, I don't know if that will happen. I also heard... Uh, constitutional attorney from Cato that said it's happened twice before where someone that's left office has been impeached uh, was one senator and one 
some cabinet member or somebody. The secretary, um, it was a secretary of war. Yes. Yeah. Secretary of war. That was it. And, um, where they were out of office and they were impeached. Uh, so I, I kind of, you know, I've heard both arguments, uh, and I'm still on the fence about it myself. I, I'm not being a constitutional scholar and, and really deserving of a decent opinion, and I haven't really studied it as much. So I'll have to say that, uh, but even if you could impeach him, you know, do you really want to, you know, sure. it's, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, if it were me uh, in, in, in charge, that my advice to the Democrats would be just, you know, hey, you know, let let it go and, and move on. You know, it, yes. let's, what's progressive about going back and in the past and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, because they're, they're never going to um, that whole insurrection. I do have an opinion about that. They're, they're not going to be able to pin the insurrection thing on on Trump. No, you're not going to. Yeah. Th that's real. To. That's really hard. Uh, you think yes. impeachment's hard and, 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 you know, but, but to that whole in, inciting, uh, to, uh, for insurrection, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's really far out there. Um, and they're not, they're just not going to be able to do that. So in my opinion, no matter what, so, you know, rather than waste everybody's time and money, I'd give it up if I were them. Cause even if they could, even if it was constitutional. And then there's the constitutionality, which I believe has to be resolved. It's, it's a sure. question out there. You've got some good arguments on both sides. So I say, uh, I say drop it, but if you're going to pursue it, then you, you may lose the, you may lose going out of the gate there with the constitutionality. It may be ruled unconstitutional. Yes. You know, you know, Tim. Yes, you, you raise you raise a good point because I I think you're right that there are argue, good arguments on both sides of, of this issue, really and truly. And um, mm -hmm. there's on one side there's there's the, the precedent because there were two cases where the person who was impeached and tried, though was already out of office. The last one being I believe was the Secretary of War in eighteen in eighteen something. I, I believe that was the last case, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But but on the other side of that equation is is the issue of what the punishment is intended in uh, as a result of a trial. If if Trump is convicted, the Constitution clearly says uh, um, removal and disqualification. So on both sides, there are good arguments. This is why I say I would hope I would hope Trump's lawyers and and just just to back up a little bit the constitution the constitutionality of of um of of um trying of uh, impeaching and trying people who are already out of office that particular issue have never been tested even though it was done twice okay so there's precedent but it have never been tested constitutionally constitutionally so i think i would hope trump lawyers will sus will get the senate to suspend this until it is tested constitutional constitutionally and then we can find out whether you can really try an officer after that person leaves office. Yeah. Well, you, you know, uh, in, in uh, sort of wrapping this issue up, I, I think the Democrats kind of realize that the writing's on the wall. They're, they're probably not going to have the votes to get that final impeachment anyway. Right. It has to be right. by two thirds, and they don't appear to have the Republicans at this stage unless they have some smoking gun that, you know, hasn't really been shown yet on this. But, you know, it, it does kind of make you wonder if this is just, you know, the Democrats, they just can't let Trump go, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. That's all this is about. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. To light their fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically, I mean, you know, they're there because, you know, the, so many voters hated Trump. I mean, that's the only reason they're there in the first place uh, as to where they are right now, where they yes. they won the presidency. If you really want to you know, talk about that. So, I mean, you know, they, they love Trump. I mean, you know, they, uh, they can't live without Trump. And if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you live by the Trump, you're going to die by the Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the sound of our uh, knucklehead noise patrol coming up. And that's where we like to end the show on kind of uh, just a little bit crazy and lighthearted that some politician said uh, or, or other celebrity. And uh, 
this one takes us right back to that Keystone uh, pipeline issue that uh, we started the show with. And it was kind of interesting because Justin Trudeau, uh, you know, he's kind of a lefty heartthrob. You know, he's the guy who, um, you know, stopped a gal at a town hall for saying all mankind that they wanted to help and said, no, no, we say people kind. <laughs> yes. Yes. We don't say and he, and he even, he even, told, he even told the woman to, to, be, to let's be a little more inclusive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah so we actually stopped one of his supporters there and just, you know, made sure she was completely woke on the subject. But, yeah, but he was, yeah. uh, you know, wow. he was kind of upset that this whole pipeline was getting killed by Biden because he was, uh, you know, he was on board with that. It's a big deal for his country. It's a, yes. um, a big boost to the country's GDP if that thing is going. And, and so one of the things that Justin Trudeau said in letting this go, and keep in mind, he is a he is a woke guy, okay? Uh, he said, despite President Biden's decision on the project, we would like to welcome other executive orders made today, including the decisions to rejoin the Paris Agreement <laughs> and the World Health Organization uh, to place a temporary moratorium on all oil and natural gas leasing activities in the Arctic National Wildlife Refugee or Refuge and uh, to reverse the travel ban on several Muslim-majority countries. But uh, the, the key issues there in that quote that he said is, you know, join the Paris Agreement and, and you know, other oil and natural gas exploration artists. So, I, you know, if he's all for that, why does he want to develop these tar sands? <laughs> you know, I mean, just, you know you, the hypocrisy is just like unbelievable. Do these guys even hear what they're saying when they say it? I don't know. You guys like, have any thoughts on that? Like, like I tell you, like I tell you, the stench of hypocrisy that comes from the left is nauseating. And whether whether we're talking about the left here in the United States or we're talking about the left in, in Canada, the stench never changes. It's the same. It's just as nauseating. It's just as stink. Well, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm just wondering if Trudeau causes any erections. <laughs> For our listeners, our last show... That was a big deal where Trump giving the left the hard on, apparently, where both Anderson Cooper and, and Schumer uh, had accidentally uh, in their in their talks had, had popped some erection language. You know, out there. Instead of, yeah, yeah they, they were saying um, they mispronounced insurrection and, and it was just a slip of the tongue. And so we're just well, we wondering know what's if. Our Anyway. <laughs> well, you know, you know the, the bottom line is Trump derangement, Trump derangement syndrome yeah. also causes accidental erections. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we saw January 6th, apparently. Right. Oh, my gosh. And this anyway. is where we wind up in a late night edition of the Knuckleheads of Liberty. <laughs> Just in the gutter. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't judge us. Don't, don't judge us for uh, for this particular episode. The later, you know, the later of the later in night at night uh, episodes. You, you have to see us during the daytime. Yes, we really... welcome you to see more of us during the daytime. You can catch us at Facebook uh, uh, libertariancounterpoint.com. Uh, we're going to have our own Facebook page up pretty soon, uh, and um, uh, you can also catch the shows at libertariancounterpoint.com. We'll see you at the next one. Thanks so much. This is Gail Morgan with Libertarian Counterpoint Productions. Knuckleheads of Liberty, Monday nights at 5.30 on Channel 17. Libertarian Counterpoint on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 17. Also, you may catch our shows on YouTube, Facebook, and on other social media. Once again, thank you for watching Libertarian Counterpoint Productions.